Okay then, good morning. Welcome everyone, and I ask you to please stand and welcome the promotees in the Boston EMS Academy class 2023-2. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to true republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will Superintendent Len Schubatowski please come to the podium for the singing of our national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Superintendent Len Shubatowski. I invite the Reverend Mark Scott to the stage for the invocation. I want to first thank you who serve in emergency medical services. One, for your partnership with the Boston Public Health Commission's Division of Violence Prevention and our effort to respond to community violence in a manner that aids healing. And secondly, for your colleagues in my mother and father's hometown, 
way over in the western part of this nation, your partners who have come to our family's aid several times with appreciated speed, compassionate care, and effective service. Let us pray. We come together and come before you, the maker, you, the maker of light, of love, of the cosmos, of earth and all that flows, flies and flourishes therein. You are maker. You maker of everything and everyone. You maker of the first day, the last day, every day and today. We come to say thank you. Thank you for respiration, for the breath in our bodies, for today, this day of celebration of accomplishment, for today, this day of the launching of a new beginning. We come bringing our many requests for help. Help these, your men, women, healthcare providers to aid those suffering in crisis and in pain. Grant them success in the mission of emergency medical services. Protect them in their coming, their going, and their serving. We remember all the good done on April 15, 2013, that proved Boston is strong. Grant them peace, even in the midst of chaos and disorder. Exchange their anxiety for your peace. We know we are asking a lot, and we bring these petitions to you upon your invitation. You said we could ask. You said we should ask. We bring it to you because you are able, you are faithful, you have done it before. All this petition we bring wrapped up in thanksgiving to you in prayer. We are praying in your most blessed and holy name, amen. amen. First of all, thank you, Reverend Scott, but also just uh, also by way of introduction, uh, uh, Reverend Mark Scott is a uh, uh, member of the Boston Public Health Commission. Uh, she's the uh, director of the Violence Prevention Program. Uh, we work very, very closely with him, have for decades, and uh, he's provided this service for us uh, on several occasions, and we're very grateful to uh, having him uh, today. Uh, you're, his day job is already in uh, an evening job, and weekend job is already pretty busy, uh, unfortunately. And uh, he administers to uh, the neighborhoods all the time as well, too. So thank you for being with us today, Reverend. Uh, we're now just going to uh, pause for the dismissal of the honor guide. Hi, Mr. Okay, please be seated. All right. Well, good morning again, and thank you all for being here today as we honor the 28 individuals who are making the important transition from EMT recruit to Boston EMS emergency medical technician. And two members uh, who were recently promoted who are uh, joining the ranks of paramedics. Uh, we are joined here today by our mayor, uh, Michelle Wu, uh, Reverend Mark Scott, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Boston EMS uh, Division, uh, BBVA EMS Division, I'm sorry, of, of the union, uh, uh, excuse me, Vice <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. 
sorry about that. Vice President Jamie McCabe and, uh, and uh, also uh, Secretary Nick Mutter. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, two very, very important uh, uh, women in our leadership uh, were not able to make it today. Dr. Basola Ojikudu, our Executive Director, uh, who uh, really loves coming to these events, uh, who is actually pretty excited. She was uh, writing and texting back and forth with me yesterday with some of the things she wanted to say, and uh, I was pretty excited to uh, uh, for you all to hear her because she really lights up a room. But uh, unfortunately, uh, she came down with an illness uh, in the middle of the night and is uh, recuperating today. Uh, but uh, we expect to see her back, and you'll be seeing her uh, at future events. Uh, and our medical director, of course, uh, Dr. Sophia, D Sophia Dyer, uh, who you know from, from instruction and from uh, work in the field and everything else, who uh, 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 also has other obligations as a physician and uh, a professor of medicine at, uh, at BU School of Medicine as well, wears multiple hats and uh, was, you know, unfortunately couldn't be with us today either. But uh, uh, they all send their regards, and they all congratulate you as well. I want to give a special thanks to Lauren Campbell, the Director of External Affairs, and the team at Suffolk University, who so generously agreed to host us on this momentous occasion. Thank you, Suffolk Law School, for your most considerate offer to also to broadcast this event via live stream so that any family members or department members who couldn't travel or be here today with us for some reason who wanted to can still experience this event. I would also like to recognize the friends and families of the graduates sitting in the audience. Thank you for your support leading to this day and for the many days to come. This is challenging work. Your friendship, love, will lend strength and resilience to these recruits uh, uh, here today. The recruits before you started their employment with us six months ago as state certified EMTs. They came to us with a range of experience, some with many years uh, under their belts and as EMTs, and uh, some fresh out of the Boston EMS EMT course. That said, none of you lack experience now. You've spent countless hours honing your clinical skills and techniques, and you've been taught by our training captains, mentored by your lead field training officers, and finally, you honed your skills under the watchful eyes of your FTOs in the field these past few months. And over the last two months, you've been riding in training ambulances, which are real ambulances which respond to real patients and real emergencies. Uh, combined, you've responded, uh, these recruits sitting here, uh, you've accounted for over 3,800 clinical incidents. Uh, you've uh, encountered uh, 1,451 patients with some sort of illness, 295 individuals experiencing a behavioral health emergency, 443 calls for various injuries, 78 overdose victims, 342 patients with respiratory disorders, 123 uh, uh, patients uh, suffering seizures, four stabbings, and three persons who were shot. You have each individually helped care for approximately 245 patients with the watchful eye and supervision of your EMT field training offices. You've already been in situations where you knew something was wrong, and when a patient who was reluctant to be transported to the hospital, but you were able to convince them to go to the hospital, and realizing later how seriously ill that they were, and that your, actually, your actions had really helped save their life. You've been on cardiac arrest calls where you were part of a team working seamlessly and efficiently with paramedics to render care. You've learned how to advocate for your patients, and you've learned how to navigate the challenges associated with addiction or attempted suicide. You've learned about the unpredictable nature of the work, the importance of treating your patients with respect and kindness. And in your squads, you've learned about professionalism and clinical excellence, and as well as about teamwork and learning how to depend on each other. All of these skills will serve you throughout your career at Boston EMS. 
Today, we also recognize uh, three members who are recently promoted to paramedic. Paramedics Alex Pendry and Rich, Richard Johnson, who have joined us today, and paramedic Kevin Cohn, who was unable to attend today. They were promoted on December 31st of 2023. The three of them have a combined 26 years of experience with our department. Now, put it in perspective, in just the last two months, these recruits uh, each on average cared for over 200 patients each. Just imagine how many lives these paramedics uh, have impacted, interacted with uh, over uh, that combined 26 years, including not just the patients, but the loved ones and uh, other people present at the scene that they uh, were, who, who also get cared for. Independently, they secured their paramedic certification and took the necessary steps to become successful and placed themselves on the paramedic promotional list. Once selected, they were assigned to a rigorous three-month training internship where they refined their advanced life support skills. And since their promotion, they've been working in ALS ambulances, responding to the most critical calls across the city of Boston. As a department, our commitment to clinical excellence begins in training, but extends well beyond that. Where over the years, your experience will continue to grow, building on what you were taught. During your pre-employment interviews, some of you said that you were drawn to this profession because of what you witnessed, watching uh, members of Boston EMS cared for a loved one. Uh, so uh, we, we came to your house, our parents' house, with both compassion and proficiency, or after witnessing members in action, uh, some said at, a, at an accident or at the scene of a shooting. Now remember that, because others will now look to you. During the challenging or traumatic times, they're going to look to you to come in and know what to do. They are going to look to you to take the necessary actions, caring for the patient and managing the scene. You may be the reason future department members join our ranks. To each of you recognized today, wear your uniform, our patch and badge with honor, have pride in how far you've come, but also know uh, you don't just represent yourselves. You represent our department and our city. You've earned your place, know that. You do belong here. This is your department now. Uh, we're proud of you, but we also have great expectations on you. Congratulations. Uh, and uh, now it is uh, my uh, great honor to introduce our keynote speaker, who's going to sw also sway you in and help to administer your badge, uh, someone who's been no stranger at all to our graduations, to our events. Uh, she recently attended the uh, cadets' uh, graduation, uh, opening of a new academy. Uh, you've got a, a solid a solid booster at City Hall on the, on the fifth floor, and that's been demonstrated in uh, word and deed, and uh, we're very lucky to have her here today. It's a very busy week. Mayor Michelle Wu. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations to all of our uh, team members here today. I am so grateful to be here with you and to serve alongside this incredible team. Um, so thank you so much to Chief Hooley for all of your leadership in every situation. And it's an honor to be up here with Superintendent Alexander and of course, Reverend Scott, thank you for all that you do. Uh, and to the entire command staff, to our union partners, to all the family members and loved ones in the room, uh, we are so thankful for your part in building this community and making sure that these public servants are stepping into their life of service for, for the city of Boston. Um, and thank you to Suffolk University for giving us the space to have uh, shelter from the rain and, and the crazy wind today as well. We are here today to recognize 28 recruits who will be joining Boston EMS as EMTs and the three Boston EMS paramedics, well, two here, uh, whose unwavering dedication to our communities has earned them their promotions. Every person comes to this work for their own 
particular individual reasons. What calls people to step up and to be willing to sacrifice and serve for their city, for strangers whose names they didn't know until that moment, it's always unique and personal. But the sense of duty and of community is shared across our workforce. Each of you have made a decision to be part of something bigger than just yourselves. And you've done so at a historic moment in the history and evolution of Boston's emergency medical services. As you heard, two weeks ago, we cut the ribbon on a new state-of-the-art training center, an ambulance station in West Roxbury, where we also graduated the 12 EMT, uh, the 12 cadets, the first cohort of EMS cadets that Boston has had in two decades. And we are committed to continuing to build out these vital services for our residents that every neighborhood relies on. The proposed budget that I, I was proud to send over to the Boston City Council of just a few days ago adds funding to increase the number and staffing levels of our EMTs to 400 strong to improve our call response times for emergencies across the city and make sure that you all have the support that you need. The, the department is upgrading radio infrastructure for emergency service use and continues to be a leading light nationwide on comprehensive emergency care. This year, Boston added our second alternative response unit, which includes a Boston EMS EMT and a Boston Emergency Services team, or BEST clinician, to ensure that residents have the mental and behavioral health support that they need in times of crisis. My goal and our administration's goal is to make Boston a home for everyone. And that means more than just housing. Home is where you feel safe and happy and healthy. It's where you know you'll be protected and cared for in the best possible ways. Boston has been always a, a leader across the country, but recently we've gotten some attention on the fact that our public safety numbers, our incidents of fatalities and homicides and, and other incidents are the lowest of any major city in the country by far. Now, rightly, that includes a lot of credit for our police officers, the community policing philosophy, all the work that happens to ensure that those partnerships and prevention and, and uh, community involvement is there. And we all know in this room that two homicides is too, too many, and we will not rest as a city until we have ended violence. But what doesn't often get talked about as part of that same conversation is that the, those numbers reflect the many, many lives that are saved, that don't end up becoming those statistics because you all responded professionally with care and compassion in times of need and changed the course of that family's life forever. I have witnessed this, whether it's in ride-alongs or the other day at a, a just sitting in church with my family when someone had a medical emergency incident and I needed to call and EMS responded right away and I saw in real time the professionalism, the expertise, the training that you all have deployed in that instant when so much was at stake. I am so incredibly grateful for all that you do. I'm so incredibly grateful to all of your family members and loved ones for serving alongside you we need you in this moment. We've got your back, and we will make sure that you have every resource to do your jobs well and to serve the residents of Boston. So thank you so much, and congratulations. I'm going to call him up, and you can stay, and we'll go up here in a second. Oh, no, you did the oath for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tend to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mayor Wu. Uh, I would now like to invite. Uh, away. I think, okay. I, I, I want to make sure I'm not messing it up by doing. We should do the oath right now. Yeah, hang on. Uh, no, uh, where, is, where is the oath? Before everyone comes on stage. Okay. Where, is, where do you see it? Page oh, here. There's oh. it says oath okay. down here. Oh, it's not. Okay, it's not yet. Before. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Perfect. Sorry. That's good. No, stay, stay, okay, stay. stay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would now like to invite uh, Superintendent Lee Alexander. 
Mayor Wu, Reverend Scott, to the stage and to ask uh, Captain Ken Skyner and Captain Waters to assist with today's program. We'll begin with the two recent department promotions. Uh, those who will be accompanying the promotees on the stage can join them as they stand and walk up. <laughs> I'd like to congratulate the promotees to the rank of paramedic. First, Richard Johnson to be badged by his mother, Noreen Johnson. Paramedic Alexander Pendry to be bashed by Christine Carbone. Thank you, okay. I think I'll get this straight now. Uh, congratulations, Paramedics Johnson and Pendry. I would like to thank, excuse me, I would like to ask Mayor Michelle Wu to the podium for the administration of the oath and the presentation of the badges for the Academy Class 2023-2. Would recruit Class 2023-2 please rise for the administration of the Boston EMS oath by Mayor Wu. Recruits, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name, do solemnly swear, I, I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and of the City of Boston. And of the city of Boston. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will serve my patients and the public with integrity and compassion. I will serve my patients and the public with integrity and compassion. And I will afford and respect. I will. Sorry, and I will afford respect equally to all. And I will afford respect equally to all. I will faithfully and impartially discharge all of the duties. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. And responsibilities, and responsibilities required of a City of Boston emergency medical technician to the best of my abilities. I do so affirm on this 12th day of April 2024. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Wu, and recruits, you may be seated. We'll now start with the badge presentations. Uh, Mayor Wu, Reverend Scott, Superintendent Alexander, please uh, join us on the stage. And Captain Scott will read the names, and Captain Waters will assist with the certific certificates. Also, uh, if anyone's coming up to a pin and join, just take your time. When you get up here, we'll... All right. Okay. 
Okay. Recognition of the recruits being promoted to the rank of EMT. Dante Candelaria to be badged by his wife, Marlene Candelaria. Michael Capola to be badged by his sister, Samantha Basler. <laughs> Romulo Curamonte to be badged by Catherine Sander. Suki Chu to be badged by her father, Ralph Chu. Brandon Cologne to be badged by his mother, Linda Powers Cologne. Daniel Connell to be badged by Lead Field Training Officer David Rossing. Brittany Cummings to be badged by her father, Mark Cummings. Isaac Dassel to be badged by Lillian Devitt. Sean Dorosh to be badged by his brother, Justin Dorosh.
Rayshon Ferguson to be badged by his wife, Jamari Ortiz. Rebecca Francis to be badged by her father, Paul Francis. William Graham to be badged by his father, retired Boston EMS Deputy Superintendent Richard Graham. Matthew Hernan to be badged by lead field training officer, Matthew McSweeney. Ryan Jakes to be badged by his mother, Diane Jakes. Christopherson Canhai to be badged by his brother, Ronald Taylor. Catriel Kurz Rebetto to be badged by Yona Sule. Khadija McIntosh to be badged by her mother, Terrell Bray. William McLaughlin to be badged by his father, Bill McLaughlin. <laughs> Ryan McManus to be badged by Jennifer Boudreau.
<laughs> Eugenia Monsaroff to be badged by her father, Stephen Monsaroff. Pimentel to be badged by Jeffrey Colbert. Marissa Russo to be badged by her brother, Daniel Russo. Sergeant to be badged by lead field training officer Sherelle Malace. Matthew Stewart to be badged by Sean Willett. Andrew Treglia to be badged by Anthe Zimbulius. Daniel Vaisital to be badged by Captain Naomi Waters. Nicholas Warren to be badged by his father, Palmer Fire Lieutenant Todd Warren. Anthony Zambulius to be badged by, yes, Andrew Treglia. Yeah.
All right, thank you, Captain Scanner. The former recruits, former recruits, haha, -ha, okay, uh, were asked to nominate a class speaker who best exemplifies the enthusiasm, focus, teamwork, perseverance, and what it takes to be successful in this academy and, and as a member of this department. They selected EMT Eugenia Monsaroff. EMT Monsaroff. Hello. Here we are. For those of you who have never attended a bat mitzvah, there is a portion of the proceedings known as the charge. This is after all the ceremony is complete, when the newly teenaged young Jew has just led their congregation in a full service. The charge is a speech typically given by an older relative, so a grandparent, a great aunt thrice removed, or as was in my case, a parent. Thanks, Dad. The charge giver attempts to impart some wisdom on their progeny, passing advice along as family heirlooms might be passed from generation to generation. After an excessively long period of study and toil for the B'nai Mitzvah, it is also time for this relative to express, express the great pride that they and the community feel at witnessing this accomplishment. This feels like an exceedingly appropriate time to deliver a charge, although I am not sure if I am the one who is most fit to deliver it. I'm not older than most of the class, nor wiser. Having grown up on the other side of the country, I have no generational claim to the strong Boston heritage of this organization. But we have just all been through the same arduous process together, and it deserves speaking about. A very wise woman once said that the Boston EMS Academy is the most fun you'll never want to have again. She was very correct. <laughs> we have laughed and cried and bled a little too. We have recreated 2020 with our own mini COVID pandemic. We have killed an unspeakable number of scenario patients. I think I had one gray hair when this process started and I counted like five the other day. We have studied anatomy until the vasculature of the heart seemed less like a Gordian knot and more like a beautiful machine. We have responded to calls from the apex of Charlestown to the base of Mattapan, or if we're talking about cardiology, from the base of Charlestown to the apex of Mattapan. It hasn't been smooth sailing all the time, but calm seas don't make strong sailors. It can never be said that we made it through this process alone. While they may have been the creators of our torment, the training staff here have done nothing but to offer us assistance to jump every and each hurdle. To the captains for your engaging lectures and patience with our every question, thank you. It is a magical art form to teach not just knowledge, but care to your students. To the field training officers for your enduring composure in the face of some truly heinous recruit shenanigans, thank you. You have taught us how to handle the big things, but also the little things, like finding the Brigham's ambulance bay and parking in the Brigham's ambulance bay while hitting a minimal number of poles and walls and other ambulances. <laughs> and to our lovely leads for everything, Alpha through Foxtrot, you came in early and you stayed late. You weren't shy about letting us mess up and fall down, but you were equally unshy when it came to imparting your hard-earned wisdom about how not to trip next time. You came up with some delightful exercises. I cherish the memories of our relay races, and you were also unabashed when you absolutely whipped us at those relay races. Thank you all. And to my classmates, we have held each other through the laughter and the tears. We have had many a late night study call to puzzle out some strange quirk of pathophysiology and not too few frigid weekend hikes or late night fast food binges to simply forget pathophysiology entirely. I am so fiercely proud of us. If I were to give a charge, it would be the following, not for you, but for us. This is not an easy job. 
This is a job that can chew you up and spit you out if you are not careful, but it is a job that can also give back to you in ways that you never expected. Take care of your patients, be kind to your patients, especially when it is hard, and take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves, especially when it is hard. I love you all very dearly. I am exceptionally honored to graduate beside you. Thank you. Thank you, EMT Montserrat. That was uh, uh, amazing, it was inspirational, and uh, wow, that's all I can say. Uh, at this time, I want to invite Captain James McCabe, uh, who uh, also serves as the Vice President of the Boston Police Association EMS Division Union, to the podium to provide remarks on behalf of the union. Thank you, Chief Hooley. Hello, and thank you for attending, all for attending today. Mayor Wu, uh, Reverend Mark Scott, Deputy, Deputy Superintendent McLaughlin from BPD, all the members of EMS command staff, and a member of the, um, uh, the academy staff that is unable to be here today, who is watching uh, on stream. I'm the Vice President of the BPA EMS Division. We are the union that represents the EMTs, paramedics, lieutenants, and captains at Boston EMS. Change is difficult for some. We, the training staff, just had a major change. We have moved from headquarters at 785 Albany Street to our new training facility in West Roxbury. The move was facilitated by countless meetings and budget hearings that were attended by Chief Hooley, Chief of Staff Laura Siegel, and Deputy Chief of Staff Aaron Serino before a single hammer was lifted to create what I feel is the most cutting edge training facility in the city. I also want to especially thank Mayor Wu for following through with the budget and the work that was done to solidify our department. Now having a training facility that truly everyone can be proud of and hopefully inspires many years of excellence reflected in our membership. Mayor, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but if you look into this crowd, the folks that are sitting right here in front of you are the physical manifestation of the words on the pages of the document that you signed. Those words have had a direct impact on the lives in, of those wearing brown uniforms and their families, and I want to say thank you for that. You, the recruits, are also going through change. You have now graduated today from an academy process and are wearing our badge on your chest. And that change is coming with many responsibilities. Unless you do this job, you never quite understand this job. Some qual calls are a window into the greatest part of the human experience. A birth of a child or doing something on a call that directly leads to someone surviving a cardiac arrest or placing a tourniquet on a wound, wounded leg that results in them living to see their loved ones once again. It is truly an amazing job that we have and it is a privilege to wear this uniform and go into people's homes. Mayor Wu always talks about meeting people where they are. Well, no one does that more than Boston EMS. We go to the location of the call no matter where you may be. You'll never, you never know who you meet on this job. I have taken people to the hospital whose name is carved into the stone outside the hospital. And I've been there for people's 37th rock bottom day in a row. But maybe this time when they are transported for their affliction, they come out on the other end and beat whatever it is, the thing that has been holding them back. Realize there is a time to be humble. When you don't know something, ask the questions of your coworkers and the nurses and the doctors. Look things up, gain the knowledge, and use it next time you see that call. I was lucky enough to give your class the hazmat lecture. 
while I was doing the lecture, we were talking about radioactive elements, and I mentioned that there is an element inside every smoke detector that is radioactive. And with my vast knowledge at the time of the periodic table of elements and radiological issues, stated that the element inside those smoke detectors is called americum. And I surmised that it was discovered by an American scientist who loved this country, and why it was named americum also is because it ruled. And the element did push-ups and was discovered after being dropped from a talon of a bald eagle. <laughs> None of those things are true. Um, when, uh, well then fast forward to me sitting in an actual radiological class that was attended by myself and four firemen, one police officer and everyone else in the room was a nuclear physicist. And when the subject of that element came up, I couldn't wait to put my hand up and say, oh yeah, I know that one, it's Americum. I was then very quickly corrected by the room over my pronunciation and found out that it's pronounced Americium. <laughs> <laughs> So the point of my story is be humble because you don't know who's in the room. <laughs> Just like you won't know the life experience of the patient that you are caring for. And now I'm asking you that are sitting in front of me not to be humble. Take pride in your accomplishments. Take pride in your uniform. Take pride in your actions every day. Take pride in the fact that you work for the hardest working, most diverse agency in public safety. Thank your families for helping you get through this difficult process because we are Boston EMS. We are. Boston EMS. Thank you for your time. Wow. Thank you, Captain McCabe. Uh, again, the hits just keep coming. Thank you. Uh, last two speakers, I can't add anything to what they've said. Uh, but at this time, I would like to invite Superintendent Schubatowski to uh, join us at the podium to officially mark the transition of recruit class 2023-2 from our academy to their assignment in field operations by logging the class on with dispatch ops. Boston C3. Boston C3 request to make a brief announcement. Boston C3, would you please log on the graduates of recruit class 2023-1. They have completed their assignment at the academy and now are assigned to field operations at Boston EMS. We wish them all good luck and Godspeed. You all know what number you are, right? <laughs> That's the important thing. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, in just uh, in one minute, uh, I'm going to invite folks to rise for the retirement of the colors. But uh, uh, before I do that, I also uh, want to also uh, acknowledge our honor guard that uh, is remarkable. Uh, uh, that's something you can think about down the line. They do do tryouts and uh, uh, training and selection for that is sponsored by uh, the department and the union. And uh, again, there's a lot of other things you can look uh, forward to down the line too, now that you're uh, out of recruit stage, right? There's a lot of uh, bike teams of the specialized teams and things that you'll shortly be able to uh, 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 partake of. So 
At this time, uh, I'm going to ask all to please rise for the retiring of the colors. And, and one last note of thanks. I also I want I want to be sure I acknowledge uh, all all the hard work that went into uh, putting this together and printing programs and getting everybody's schedules and uh, coordinating with uh, folks in the mayor's office. Certainly, folks in administration at our offices at Boston EMS and at training and uh, everybody who helped along the way to make make this such a nice event. So thank you for that. And with that, I will say thank you for joining us today. This concludes our ceremony. Have a nice day.